Mustache is a wonderfully simple templating language that is supported in a variety of programming languages, including Ruby and JavaScript. So if you need to share a view template across these languages, Mustache is a great way to go. You can check out the demo here to see an example. So this is what a mustache template looks like. It uses double curly braces or double mustaches if you prefer to input attributes. And you can even use blocks by pre prefixing them with the pound symbol to uh, either iterate through multiple items or function as if conditions. And you can see given this data right here, this JSON, it will render out this given template. And since this demo is interactive, you may want to try experimenting with different input data and see what output you get here. But it's really a simple templating language, so let's see what's involved in adding it to our Rails application. Now what I have in this Rails application here is a list of products, and right now I'm only displaying 10 of the products, but there are a lot more products in the database. And what I would like to happen is as the user scrolls down near the bottom of the page that it automatically loads more products so we get an endless scrolling effect here. Now if you check out the template for that page there, you can see it's very simple. We just have a div with the ID of products and we're looping through all the products there and displaying them. So what we need to do is detect if the user scrolled to the bottom of the page and then add more products to this products div here. And I will do that inside of the products coffee script file here. So first let's make sure the DOM is loaded and then let's also check that we have a div of products so that we don't load this if it's not on the products page. Now this logic here is going to be a little bit complex. So I'm going to put this inside of a class called products pager. And then we can create a class in CoffeeScript like this, products pager, and give it a constructor function here. So the first thing I wanna do inside of here is listen to the scroll event on our window because when the user scrolls, we wanna detect it. And let's add a function called check in here so that it gets called every time the user scrolls. Now when defining functions for our, our class like this, I like to always use the fat arrow instead of the skinny arrow because the fat arrow will ensure the context stays the same. That means this right here will always refer to the products pager instance and not whatever the scroll event happens to bind it to. Okay, so now every time the user scrolls, we wanna see if the scroll bar is near the bottom of the page. So I'm going to make a function for doing this in a minute. And then if it is near the bottom, what I wanna do is stop listening for the scroll event. So I'll call window unbind to unbind the scroll event and the specifically the check function from that scroll event. So it unbinds that. And then I want to fetch information from our Rails application and update the products listing. So I'm going to do that a little bit later. So for now, I'm just going to display an alert message saying uh, that it is near the bottom so that we can test this out. Now I still need to make this near bottom function here. So I'm just going to paste in some code to handle this. Basically all we're doing is just checking if the window scroll bar is within 50 pixels of the bottom of the page. And you might want to adjust this number depending on the application. So now when we reload the page here and then scroll down here, you can see we get our near bottom alert dialog when it's near the bottom, and then it no longer shows up because it's unbound the event. So now that we know this is working, we can remove our alert dialog box here and then fetch the products from our Rails application and then display them here. Now normally when I wanna do this, I will just use get script and then just make a JavaScript template on the Rails app side and then handle it all in there but sometimes you wanna work with JSON instead on your JavaScript end and just handle it all through JavaScript. It just depends on what you're doing on the JavaScript client side on which way you wanna go. Now JSON goes really well with mustache templates, so that's what I'll be using here. So a get JSON call requires a URL, and so I'm just going to fetch that from our products div. Let's make a data attribute on here because I don't really like putting URLs in line in the JavaScript. Let's make one called JSON URL that I can use to uh, fetch the URL. And so that means on this index template here, on our products div here, I can add a data attribute for the JSON URL, and then just set this to our products URL, and let's take the uh, JSON format here, just like that. So now back in our coffee script, when we get our JSON response, let's call a render function here, and that will just pass in our products, which will be an array of products here. And I will just alert these for now so we can see if it's working. And so that JSON request will trigger the index action of our products controller here. And when that happens, we want to respond to the JSON format. So we can respond to the HTML format by default and then handle JSON by uh, rendering the JSON for the 
products array here. So now when we reload this page and then scroll down to the bottom, we get an alert dialog with the 10 products that are returned by the JSON. So that's working. However, we still need to render the products here at the bottom of the page, and that's where mustache comes in. So let's make a mustache template inside of our index view here based off of what we're doing inside of each product. Because what we want to do is render the same thing out, but for each object in the JavaScript. Now mustache is quite a simple templating language, so we won't have access to all these fancy helper methods here. So let's just make a simple call to uh, href here for the link. And I hate to do a static URL, but let's just get this working at first. So we want to toss in our ID and our name for our product. And then we want our price. I should delete this part up here. And then we want our released at. And notice I have an if condition here, so I can do pound released at and then slash release at, and then display our release at date and time. So I'm just going to say release at here, and we can work on the formatting later. Now we don't actually want to render out this template here, so I'll put this in a script tag so that we can reference it in our JavaScript. So let's say a type is text HTML, and then we'll give it an ID of product uh, template. Now to render a mustache template in JavaScript, we can use the mustache JS project here, there's a mustache.js file here that we can just download and then put in our Rails app. Now, because this is an external JavaScript library, I'm going to place this under the vendor assets JavaScripts directory and then just use this curl command to download it. And then I still need to tell Rails to include that into the asset pipeline under the application.js file here by just saying require a mustache. And so now we have everything necessary to render out the products here instead of displaying an alert dialog box in our, our coffee script. So what we want to do is first loop through all the products. So for product in products, and then we want to render these out. So let's append them to our products div here. And we need to render out the mustache template. And you can do that by calling mustache to HTML and then passing it the content of the template. And we can grab that by calling product template and calling HTML on this to grab the content of that script tag. And then we just have to pass in our product object. So that will render each one. And finally, let's also re-enable the uh, scroll detection. So let's say scroll on check, and that way it'll check for when the user scrolls near the bottom again. So now when we go to our application and scroll down, notice that when the scroll bar gets near the bottom, it jumps up because it's loading more products. Now one obvious problem here is that it's loading the same products over and over again. So let's fix that real quick. So inside of our coffee script here, let's keep track of our current page and then send that in our Rails request. So inside of the products page or constructor here, let's set a page instance variable here to one, and then we can increment that when the user's near the bottom. And then we can send that off in our JSON request here. So we want to set a page to the current page. And one other quick change I want to make here is that I need to stop checking for scrolling events if we don't get back any products. So I can say if products um, length is greater than zero, then that means I have products back and that we, means we should continue checking for scrolling. And then inside of the products controller, we can use that page parameter to change the products offset here. So we can say offset is the uh, page parameter. Let's convert it to an integer, and then let's subtract one from it, and then multiply it by our limit, which is 10. And we only want to do that if the page parameter is present. So now let's try this out, reload the page here. And now when I scroll down, looks like it's working, fetching the next products in our list and then stopping at the bottom, yay. Now the formatting of the mustache rendered template here could really use some improvement. But before I get into that, let's focus on removing the duplication between the rendering of the HTML in Rails and the rendering of it in JavaScript. Because we're basically duplicating our template here where we have our mustache template and then our ERB template. So it would be nice if we just had one template. So let's just choose the mustache template, but that means we need some way to render mustache inside of Ruby. And so to do this, we can use the mustache Ruby gem, which works very similar to the mustache JS counterpart where you just call mustache render, pass in the template, and pass in the variables, and then it'll render it out. 
Now, there are several other gems which build onto this to help integrate Mustache into Rails, but here I want to show you how to just integrate it manually so you can get a better idea of how a template handler works. So the first step is to go to into your gem file and add the Mustache gem into here, and then run the bundle command to install it. And then next, I want to move this Mustache template right here into a partial, and we can render that out. Uh, let's call it product here. And then we can create that partial called underscore product, and then HTML, but not .erb because this is a mustache template here, not an ERB template. And then just paste that code into here. Now, if we reload this page here, you can see that we get a missing template error because it doesn't know how to find a mustache template because there's no handler for mustache, just ERB builder and CoffeeScript. So we can add a custom mustache handler. So I'm going to add this handler inside of the config initializers directory here. Alternatively, you may want to add it to the lib directory. So what is called is mustache template handler, but really you could call it anything you want. Now template handlers changed quite a bit in Rails 3.1. Before that, you had to override a render method and a compile method and so on. But here in Rails 3.1, you just have to define one method and that is call, and that takes a template object. So this could be a module, this could be a class, or even a proc or a lambda, because that responds to call. Rails doesn't really care. And then you just need to register this template handler by calling action view template, register template handler, and then passing in the name that you want to use for the uh, file extension, in this case, mustache, and then the name of the object or module or class or whatever you pass in that has or responds to the call method. And then next we can just get to writing our template handler. And this is a little bit strange because what it does is it expects this method to return some Ruby code inside of a string. So you could say one plus one, and then that would return two, which would be the output of the template because it interprets it in Ruby. Now what we can do is call template.source, which will be the content of the template that is rendering, in this case the mustache template partial we made, and you can call inspect on this to return an object which will be the stringy scaled version of it in Ruby representation. And then you could call something like HTML safe to make sure that it's escaped properly. Now you'll need to restart your Rails application whenever changing an initializer file, but once you do, uh, we can hit reload here. And then once it loads, we can just check out the source here and see the content of the template. And you can see it looks like it did before, but this time it's rendering it through a partial. And so now that we have moved this inside of a partial, we can use the partial up here as well and remove that duplication. However, now we just need to pass in our product information so that it knows to render that out using the mustache template. Now, to do this, I'm just going to make a mustache option here, which will actually be a local variable that's passed into the partial and just pass in our product object into there. Now I'm actually going to call as JSON in here as well so that we make sure it stays consistent between the uh, JavaScript representation. And so now inside of our template handler, we just have to check for that mustache option and then render it out using mustache if it exists. So we can check template.locals and see if that includes a mustache option. Now template.locals is actually going to be an array of the local variables which are passed into the template, actually an array of the keys. So if that exists, then we want to render this out using mustache. And so we can call mustache.render and then pass in our template and then pass in our mustache object, which is going to be the hash representation of the product. And then otherwise, we just want to render out the raw template for our JavaScript. Now, once you restart your application and then reload the page here, you can see that it'll now use mustache template for all of the rendering, not just the JavaScript rendering. So now that we removed the duplication, let's focus on fixing the formatting of our mustache template here. So to handle this here, I'm going to improve the formatting of the product hash as I pass it off to mustache when I convert it to JSON. So this way it's fixed in Ruby and I can pass that details off to uh, JavaScript. However, you may also want to consider doing the formatting on the JavaScript side and then interpreting that through Ruby. Uh, that's uh, probably an episode in itself. So for here, let's just do a quick and dirty solution of creating a helper method uh, called product for mustache that just formats our product properly for mustache. So I'll just define that method inside of the products helper module here, and I'll just paste it in because it is a lot of code, but it's actually quite simple. 
It's called product for mustache, accepts our product model, and just returns a hash of attributes which we can use inside of our mustache template. So we have a URL attribute, which is just the product's URL, uh, a name, the price, which is the number to currency formatted version of the price, and the release date, date which is properly formatted, uh, assuming it exists. So the try option there will always return nil if it doesn't uh, properly exist. Now, if you have some complex logic here, you may want to move this inside of a presenter class like I showed in episode 287, but a simple helper method will work for us here. Now, going to the mustache template, the only real change we need to make here is for the URL because I added that attribute called URL, and then we have the name, price, and release dat date, which is all correct. And then one more change we need to make here is inside of the products controller because we need to return that hash of attributes for mustache when we return our JSON formatting here. And so we could do that by calling products.map, and then for each product, we want to call the, which is actually helper method, so we can call view context to get our view, and then we can call helper methods through this. So we could call the product for a mustache helper method here, and then just return our, pass in our product here, and that will return all the attributes, and then collect them all up into an array, and then pass them off to JSON. So now when we reload this page here, watch the formatting here, hit reload, now it's properly formatted with the price, the release date, and so on, just like we had it before. So that's it for this episode on sharing a mustache template between Rails and JavaScript. Rails renders the first items on the initial page, and then JavaScript handles the rendering on every item afterwards. Pretty awesome. Now one more thing before I go. If you like mustache, you may also want to check out handlebars. It basically extends mustache and adds a few more features to the language so you can do more complex things in the template. And it also adds a separate compile step so that uh, it has better performance. You can check out the site here for more details.